Okay, so let's start with the second session about 5G coverage. In the last session, we discussed about uh, what are the main factors for 5G coverage, and we discussed about the B1 threshold. So when we expand the B1 threshold, we can sort of expand our 5G coverage. However, we cannot expand the B1 threshold excessively because then that impacts the KPIs. So uh, the question would be, what is an optimum B1 threshold? How do we know that? How do we know how much coverage we can get or how much coverage we can expand, right? So there are two ways to do that um, because there are, let's say, there are two main categories for a 5G service. One would be the accessibility or the retainability concept. The second will be the throughput. Now, if you look at the accessibility part, let's say the operator you're working for, they have uh, some thresholds that uh, they do not want if their accessibility or their drop rate, 5G drop rate, to go beyond that particular threshold, right? Then you need to go through this um, optimization way or this an analysis way. Uh, so what we do is that we choose a cluster, a cluster which is big enough uh, to sort of uh, represent the network, right? And then we do a short call drive on that. So what is a short call? A short call means that you do uh, small sessions. Uh, so what you can do is that let's say you download or upload a very small file let's say less than one megabyte. So every time the mobile connects to 5G, downloads a small file, then it's, it goes back to idle mode. Then again, it connects to the network, downloads a small file, goes back to idle mode. So in the end, what will happen is that in the whole of the cluster drive, you will have like hundreds of different samples where uh, the UE connected to the 5G network. So each of that session, will have a corresponding RSRP value. So what you do is that you plot a map where you have uh, the SCG failure rate. These are the number of times the 5G session failed. Let's say the UE tried to connect to 5G to download the file, but it failed at RATCH or it failed at, uh, let's say it had an RLC re uh, transmission causing a drop. So all of that will be pegged in the 5G SCG failure rate. So you put the 5G SCG failure rate over here and if your operator has a threshold, let's say if it says that we cannot exceed 2%, so you put a red line over at about around 2%, that is your threshold. And then you have all the short calls, the total number of short calls and the number of short calls that failed, you can map it against RSRP. So here we have the RSRP on the X axis. So if I map the number of failed calls and divided by the total number of calls, I get the SCG failure rate and I map it over the RSRP along the X axis. So it will look like something like this. So it's just an example. So if we see here that our threshold of let's say 2% has a line over here and at NEG108, we are below the threshold and we remain below the threshold until NEG114. But at NEG115, uh, the SCG failure rate has now gone above the threshold, right? So that would mean that uh, now, at this point, uh, we cannot sustain a 5G coverage or a 5G service within the threshold defined by that operator, right? So this is where you then draw a line and say that above this RSRP, let's say above NEG115 and uh, NEG114 onwards, uh, we can sustain the 5G service within the given thresholds, within within this uh, given quality of service, for instance. So in the previous session, we discussed that, let's say our, our, our B1 threshold was NEG100. So that means for that, this network, we can expand the B1 threshold from NEG100 to NEG114, still maintaining the KPI threshold within uh, the optimum values. Now overall, yes, if you expand the B1 threshold, your KPIs will go down a bit. But with this uh, threshold, with this technique or this analysis, you will be sure that it will not go beyond your target threshold. And you will be able to add much more 5G users to your system, your network. Uh, what will happen is that uh, overall, the user experience will increase because uh, the LTE uh, will have lesser congestion. LTE users that were stuck on LTE before, they will now be able to move to 5G and you will have overall better user experience because 5G overall gives you much better uh, throughputs and uh, uh, user experience compared to what you get on LTE. So this is how you can do for the perspective of, of uh, um, 
the accessibility and the retainability concept. The one important point here is that uh, in case of a short call, you will only be able to connect to 5G if you are uh, above the B1 threshold, right? Uh, let's say if the B1 threshold is NEG100 and you do a short call drive test, then all your sessions most probably will be above NEG100. So you will not be able to make this curve. So to, to generate this curve for that cluster, when you're doing the drive test, you will have to reduce the B1 threshold. For instance, if we, if for that cluster, we, we uh, reduce the B1 threshold to NEG125 dBm and then do a drive test, then the you, the mobile will find the, the RSRP of NEG115. It can still, it can still connect to 5G because, uh, you know, see, you are above the B1 threshold. So if you do not do this, then this uh, mechanism will not work. So you will have to find a cluster, change the B1 threshold to a lower value, then perform the short call drive test then you can revert it to let's say your own um, neg 100 value for instance and then you do the analysis and find out the optimum b1 threshold and most of the time what you will find out that you can expand your 5g coverage uh, using this uh, whole anal analy analytical method now the other option would be the throughput part uh, let's say the operator you are working with it's um, they have uh, a throughput uh, threshold they don't want 5g throughput to be below a th certain threshold for example um, they say that they do not want it to go below 20 mbps now in that case what you will do is that again you will choose a cluster but you can do this with a, just a long call test so you do a cluster drive and uh, once you are connected to the to the 5g network once you are connected then you can drag and go all the way to minus 120 minus 125 dbm rsrp as well right because uh, for the long call test you do not need to connect again and again so once you are connected in let's say at neg 95 and then you can drag all the way to neg 20 neg 120 for instance so in this case you do not need to change the b1 threshold uh, for this method for this method just do a long call test and whether the uh, your kpi target or your threshold is uh, downlink throughput or uplink throughput you can base your test based on that so if let's say the operator gives you a target that they want a 20 mbps downlink throughput and 5 mbps uplink throughput then you can do um, two drive tests two long calls one for downlink one for uplink and then you can map the, the throughput against the rsrp like this one over here so we have throughput here it can be downlink throughput or uplink throughput we can put the red line here where is our threshold let's say 20 mbps for downlink or in case of uh, uplink we can let's say put 5 mbps again that's all an example uh, every operator might have their own uh, targets for throughput so you will have to follow that and the targets can vary based on the band for instance in in mid band which where you have higher bandwidth you can have a higher target while in case of a low band fdd 5g g cell you will have a lower target right so accordingly you can adjust the target and then plot your throughput against each rsrp index and over here let's say at neg 116 we can see that now the throughput is below the threshold so it would mean that neg 115 onwards we can have the optimum b1 threshold for the given target and if let's say the customer has both accessibility and throughput as a target then you use both these methods and the one which gives you the higher b1 will be your value so for instance over here we have the optimum b1 threshold as neg 114 here we have as neg 115 so the value that we will choose then would be neg 114 so using this method that you can find out the optimum b1 threshold and how much 5g coverage you can expand without um, exceeding your um, contracted or your uh, acceptance threshold for instance right so this is a, a quick one to show you how you can expand your 5g coverage um, in a safe way and uh, from here onward we'll do another session on 5g coverage looking at uh, some other topics that we can uh, use to increase 5G coverage apart from the B1 threshold. Stay tuned. Take care. Bye-bye.